thank you, uh, President and, and uh, tribal leaders and students for coming and uh, taking your time to hang out. Maybe you have to come here, so I don't know. But if you volunteer, thanks for volunteering to come <laughs> and uh, hang out a few minutes. Uh, my uh, father is uh, Ogallala uh, from Pine Ridge, and my mom is uh, Sichangu from Rosebud. And so uh, uh, typically not in the most positive way. So my mom left Rosebud uh, back in the day, went to Pine Ridge, met my dad. They got married. I was conceived. They got divorced. My mom moved back to Rosebud. And so I was born uh, among my mother's people. And I never grew up uh, around Pine Ridge, or I never grew up around my twist relatives. So my mom was a larvae, and so I grew up uh, with all of her family and, and then everybody who married. And, but then uh, during the day, uh, we left the res back in the relocation era. And so we moved to Denver, and we lived in the ghettos in Denver when I was little. And so that was in the, in the early 60s, so you had the black-white race riots, and then you had the AIM stuff and La Raza. Latino stuff, and so we were living in the hood, in the ghettos, and the projects in Denver, which was an interesting thing. And then we left there, because uh, mom didn't want us with the violence and the alcohol and abuse and all of that. And the long story, we ended up out in Oregon. And so I went like from grade four through 12 in this little all-white logging town in Oregon. And, uh, but, you know, if you don't live in a border town, you live far away with the, that don't have a, a big Indian community. Back then, it was cool to be Indian in that situation. You know, Billy Jack came out you know, a little while later. And, and so Billy Jack was like our first, you know, butt-kicking kung fu, like, superhero. And, and, um, and he was protecting all the hippies on the commune, remember? And, uh, so, uh, it was okay to, to be all of that. And um, uh, so then I went back to the reservation after high school. And uh, in 72, I went to St. Eglishka. And so it was in its, I think, second year of existence at the time. And, uh, but then AIM came through town, uh, the Trail of Broken Treaties, protest, uh, caravan. Uh, so I was like 18 at the time, I think, 19, 18, I think. And so it sounded like a fun trip, you know, a little adventure, go have vacation to Washington, D.C., and, you know, try to pick up white girls and stuff like that. And so I so, uh, went to Washington, D.C., and uh, then the whole takeover thing happened, you know. So, uh, so there we were, the BIA building, and then sort of all hell broke loose, and they captured everybody. And, and then we let all the employees go, and then we barricaded ourselves in the building. So, you know, a lot of you know the story. So, so for the next eight days, we were holed up in the BIA building, surrounded by federal marshals and riot police and, and all of that. So me and my Rosebud homies, we were up on the roof. And uh, so we had, uh, we all made weapons, you know, and uh, so we had spears and knives and bow and arrows and you know, good Indian stuff. And then we had automatic weapons and... Uh, <laughs> There were actually cases of dynamite, and, uh, and at one point I had an egg carton uh, it was full of gas-filled light bulbs, and uh, so little mini, mini Molotov cocktails, and, and then we took all the typewriters and adding machines and took them up on the roof, and then when the, the police would come, then we would bomb them with uh, big, heavy IBM Selectric typewriters. And, uh, some of you don't remember IBM Selectric typewriters, but as, as older people do. And uh, maybe you still got some at a tribal college. <laughs> Good leftover rummage sale typewriters. Give them to the Indian college. So that was sort of a, a backdrop for me. And then at that time, I began to really um, let in my own soul a hatred toward white people, a hatred toward Christianity. And so, you know, I'm listening to all the, the speeches and the rhetoric and so Means and Banks and Belcourt and Carter Camp and all those guys and the gals that are there. And um, made sense to me at the time. And so uh, on the res, you know, the, it was the Catholic Church who came to ran our boarding schools. You had the BIA schools and then the Catholic schools. So my, you know, grandparents went to St. Francis. Uh, well, Pine Ridge was Red Cloud and then 
and then St. Francis and Mission and St. Francis. And so mom and dad all went, all my aunties and uncles went. And so, you know, growing up hearing their stories of boarding school and, you know, all those stories. And uh, so as I was growing up, uh, I had to go to Catholic church. And so uh, this was now out in Oregon. So I became an altar boy and I learned my Latin prayers. And but we used to steal the wine from the back of the church <laughs> and uh, steal those little boxes of communion wafers. And so, um, you know, the Pentecostal Charismatics talk about getting drunk in the spirit. Well, we were doing that long before we ever started going to church. And, um, you know, in the Catholic Church, you know, you have the, the, the statue of Joseph and Mary in the front. And then the candles, you know, so you light the candle, put some money in the box, and then you make your prayer. And so we used to steal the money out of those little boxes. And if you've been into Catholic Church in a while, they put padlocks on those boxes nowadays. And so we feel like we can take some credit for changing the policies of the entire Roman Catholic Church in the United States. And uh, so, you know, that was my experience. And then, you know, for good Catholics, you go to confession and you I haven't been here in a long time. <laughs> and you just make up a bunch of more lies and tell the priest and... And you go out and do a couple of Our Fathers, Hail Marys, you know, and then you go to communion. Then you live like hell starting Monday morning all over again. And you come back Friday night. And so it's kind of convenient, you know, Catholicism. But at this, you know, at a certain point, you know, if, if this was Christianity, what the, these Christian organizations who ran the boarding schools, if that's what it meant to be a Christian, then in my own experience, I said, man, fully on Christianity. I don't want nothing to do with the white man's religion. It's oppressive. It's genocidal. Uh, just wants to create in us this sense of shame or embarrassment for being red or being Indian or whatever. And so that was my experience uh, for a period of time. Uh, but I wanted to know uh, Wakantanka, I wanted to know Tunkashila, and, and even in our ways, you know, so going to the sweats and the ceremonies, it's kind of a little bit out there, you know, like the, the spirits are here with us and, and, and we have our help and our power and our medicines and all of that, but it was never this personal thing. And then when I was in AIM, you know, the, the medicine man, and I won't say any of their names, but so, you know, we'd have ceremonies and sweats and all that. And then Saturday night, you know, in Mission, South Dakota, they come staggering out of Arlo's bar, drunk as a skunk, you know, two, three women under each arm. And, and um, so all of them guys, you know, Means, Banks, they probably got 10, 15 kids each all over the country, you know, and the old Indian stud complex. And so I got cousins from some of those guys, you know. So here they're, they're the leaders, and they're drunk, and just having babies, like that's what they're supposed to do. And, and so I became sort of disillusioned with what I saw as some of their lives. They were, they were like preaching good ideologies for the values of Lakota people, generosity and truthfulness and honesty and and living in a good way, walking on the red road, and abstinence, and all that. But they live, you know, not any better than any other person that I met along the way. And then the Catholic guys, you know, my experience, they were not too kind. And then, so what my aunties and uncles say is the Germans who came to Rosebud Reservation and ran. You know, those German people, they were precise and precision and engineers and exacting and sort of worldview. That was the kind of human beings they were. So that's how they did their Christianity sit in rows and cut your hair and just right and exact place and precision and your haircuts and so they said they were cruel people those german catholics and um so it just created you know all the sexual abuse and physical and violent and psychological trauma that came out of all of that so i'm i'm thinking you know if that's sort of the net result of christian mission then it isn't very appealing uh, to me at the time 